throughout the better part of the 20th century, the musical technology remained relatively stagnant. But our generation was lucky enough to grow up with a variety of different ways to listen to our music. It started off with one of these, probably unfamiliar now, but CDs were popular. Then it moved on to MP3s, and they were conveniently stored on our computers and iPods. And now, what is your music? It's, it's nothing. It's intangible. But isn't that liberating? With streaming, it takes up no space in your home, on your computer, and this new ed addition to the music industry is accelerating the process of the extinction for tangible music. But it's also enabling the industry to actually grow for once. Now some inventions take time to catch on, but once they do, they spread like wildfire. According to the textbook written by Larry Starr and Christopher Waterman, American Popular Music from Minstrelsy to MP3, uh, the compact disc, or CD, was invented in 1983, but it took about five years to generate higher sales than vinyl LPs. Now, the production costs of these two is, were, the, were the same, but record companies struck while the iron was hot and priced them at $13, which was about $6 more than the average LP at the time. Now, this profitability seemed highly unlikely and way too good to be true, and it was. Mark Coleman was a former journalist for Rolling Stone magazine, and he said it best in his book, Playback. For the music business, compact discs were a curse disguised as a blessing. They didn't have to be playback only. The CD code had been cracked. In other words, CDs could be copied. You could ask your buddy for your favorite band's latest release and get it for free on a burned copy. But this ended up killing the CD. With sales dipping every year, CD elimination is imminent due to the advent of the MP3. Now modern technology has officially infiltrated the music industry. It has become easy and more convenient to spend less money on the same amount of songs. But with these MP3s comes dreaded piracy. As shown in a survey conducted by the US Census Bureau entitled uh, Consumer Spending on Recorded Music, the average American in 2012 spent a mere $43.33 on recorded music. Now immediately, all piracy websites like the Pirate Bay and Isohunt were, were blamed. However, online music store sales as well as piracy rates were, have been plummeting over the past couple years. So there must be a different culprit. We now move to the World Wide Web with music streaming websites. The internet is shaping the music industry. Streaming sites like Spotify and Pandora are leaving artists in the dust. Damon Krakowski wrote a first-hand account for, Pitch, for Pitchfork, a music website, on his song Tugboat, which he wrote uh, while in a band called Galaxy 500. He revealed that the song was played 7,800 times on Pandora that quarter, for which each of its songwriters were paid a collective total of 21 cents. Evidently, recording music is, cannot be a band's main source of income. It's impossible for any artist not named Rihanna, Lady Gaga, or Coldplay to make a decent living off of these sites. As reported by Ben Cesario of the New York Times in an article entitled, uh, As Music Streaming Grows, Royalties Slow to a Trickle, artists receive between five and seven hundredths of a cent per stream of a song on Spotify. However, this plays to the advantage of music fans because not only are we hearing the music at a very low cost, but also this new age calls for musical quality over quantity. The artist must now turn the listener into a lifelong fan who goes to shows and buys merchandise so that they can make some money. However, Cesario also states in another article entitled uh, History Shadows and Upbeat Music Sales Forecast that the industry now worth $5.3 billion is expected to grow by 7.5% by 2016. And this is because of the industry's acceptance of streaming. They have now tweaked their business model to accommodate to these changes. It seems counterintuitive, but um, it seems counterintuitive, but artists are because artists are the building blocks for the music industry. But they're the ones hurting. Meanwhile, this big business is thriving. 
and it's all be due to online streaming websites. Music is the common ground of humanity. As you can see, just over the last couple decades, the way we acquire and listen to music has changed dramatically. It went from the industry's masked folly of the CD to the digital MP3 file, and now to the completely intangible online streaming sites. But one thing remains true. Music is in all of us, and there's no prerequisite for listening to it. The transformation of audio formats affects everyone from the casual listener to the music aficionado. We are all living through the same unique experience, and through it, we will move forward and grow together. Thank you.